Let's start now with the House District 121 race. We are joined now by Mark LaHood. He is a candidate in the Republican primary for that race. This is one that uh, you just saw ads for right before this segment. Yeah. Mark, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you for having me on. Obviously, it's something, you know, top of mind as we're entering early voting coming up um, tomorrow starts. So I want to start with asking you about one of the biggest issues that you have had in your ads of late, immigration, yeah. the border. You talked about wanting to make a change to create something along the lines of a border protection unit. Why do you think that's a solution? Well, I mean, quite frankly, because the federal government's not doing their job and we have to protect our home. Our border is just an extension of our home. And so uh, one of the reasons why I'm running is simply this, is that right now in the state house, there's a big group of Republicans that are voting against the governor, against the Senate, against the rest of us, and we haven't got anything meaningful. And so what I want to do is actually create legislation that actually has a bite to it, but then we have to fund it and support it. You, you are running against an incumbent, Steve Allison, who you would think he would get the backing of the governor, but I think because of what you said, he's voted against the governor on school vouchers. He is not getting the support of the governor. What's the biggest difference outside of vouchers between you and Steve Allison. Aside from school choice, the biggest issues are um, I'm unashamedly pro securing the border. Um, I want to make election uh, law and integrity uh, more more secure. I mean, the biggest issue is that Steve is the one that wrote the bill that reduced election fraud from a felony to a misdemeanor. Um, and quite honestly, Steve has been an advocate of DEI and woke policies. I'm not ashamed and I'm not shy in, in what my principles are and I've made that my forefront. And I think because of that, we now have the governor, we have the AG, we have Sid Miller, and we have Ted Cruz supporting us. But when you talk about uh, school choice, as you put it, or, yeah. or vouchers, as other people have put it, you are running in a district where uh, a lot of it is the Alamo Heights School District. And a lot of people are proud of that school district and don't want to see it weakened through school choice slash vouchers. How do you rectify that? I firmly believe it's all about messaging and propaganda. I believe that competition improves everything in business and in education because competition creates a better product, a better service, and a better price. In all the states that have passed it, teacher pay goes up, teacher uh, treatment goes up, and then most importantly, our, our students actually learn better. And so if Alamo Heights is a great school, people aren't going to be leaving it. So that's not going to be affected. I mean, it's, it's kind of a false argument because what's happening is parents want what's best for their kids. And I don't care whether you're Republican or Democrat. I've talked to hundreds of parents and they all they want is what's best for their child, for their child to thrive. And this gives them that option. And, I, and that's a huge concern for those who have questions about the school voucher idea is taking public dollars away from a public education system that many would argue is already underfunded. So you don't feel like that would be a concern if a school voucher program were to exist in the state? I don't, because if our schools are doing the job, people aren't going to leave. I mean, the TEA just put out stats from last year where over 55 percent of our kids from kinder through senior year of high school are below where they should be in mathematics and over 35 or 37 percent are below where they should be in reading. Our schools are failing our children. You know, we're, we're focusing on, on, on ideology instead of just teaching them how to think for themselves and how to be successful. And so I believe, I full, wholeheartedly believe that what this is going to do is get schools back on track on focusing on being schools and not trying to raise something else. But it, you, you know what Alamo Heights is unique. I mean, you live there. You, you are familiar with it. I mean, they, there's a lot of pride in that school district being one of the state's best. Yeah. So I, that, that, it seems as if Steve Allison is, is running against you with the fact of he's not for Alamo Heights Public School and taking away funds from Alamo Heights Public School. Yeah, so the funds, follow, so my, my suggestion, or not mine, I create it, but what I advocate is the funds follow the child. So if the children are staying in Alamo Heights School District, it's not being defunded. That's what I'm saying. It's a fake yeah. argument they're saying to try and get people emotionally blindsided. Alamo Heights is a great school district. No one's leaving. The funds in Alamo Heights aren't going anywhere. But what we have to do is find out what's best and provide what's best for our children in all of our schools. And not just 121. I mean, if 121, those are our stats, what's in 117 or 116 or the rest of the state? We need, it, we need to invest in our kids. Let's talk about uh, an issue that at the Alamo Heights area is not alone in feeling property tax. <laughs> yeah. Property taxes rising exponentially. Yeah. You have talked about how some of the state's effort to compress that 
while you believe well-intentioned hasn't worked. What's your suggestion? Well, I mean, it, it, it's worked, but it's a short-term solution. I mean, the, the problem is we need to figure out something that we're going to be able to do long-term with our taxes. I mean, you know, the, the problem is this, right, is that what are the, what's the solution? We do what California does and do an income tax. I don't want to do that. Um, but we need to figure out, one, where our tax money is going, but then we also have to keep our uh, appraisal district in check because it doesn't matter if they give us benefit on the front end. If, if, if the county's going to come in and just jack up the prices, we're still paying. I mean, I, I didn't see any benefit this year. I didn't feel it. I want to talk about just overall. You ran against now District Attorney Joe Gonzalez uh, a few years ago. Yeah. You've been a candidate before. I haven't seen Steve Allison come out against any of his other candidates, the, the, uh, the opponents, the way he has you. Do you have a feel as you're out campaigning how this election is going? Do you think because you're being attacked so vociferously by Steve Allison that this is a real race? Without a doubt. I mean, um, we've hit close to 10,000 doors. I've knocked on about a thousand doors myself uh, and spoken with hundreds and hundreds of people. And we're seeing um, undeniable support um, for our campaign, for our messaging. I mean, you know, I run the campaign the same way I did for DA, right? Is uh, matter of fact, common sense, and I speak from the heart. And that's what people are resonating with. And I, I'm pretty confident that the support is there for us and we're going to come out victorious on March 5th. Never easy to beat an incumbent. No, it's not. It's definitely a fight. But uh, I guess I like to pick hard battles. <laughs> yeah, there you go. All right, Election Day, like you said, March 5th. Early voting starts tomorrow. Get out there and vote. We have a sample ballot, all the locations, all the things you need to know on our website. Mark, thanks so much for being Thank here. Thank you all so much. Thank you yeah. for your time. I know you're heading to a debate right after this, so we appreciate you fitting <laughs> Thank us. Thank you. I'll be safe. Yeah. Thank yeah, you. you. too. Thanks for watching KSAT. If you're on YouTube, remember to like and subscribe to stay up to date on San Antonio's latest news and weather.